And whenever he walks away and like resumes traveling normally on the run, <laughs> they flutter back into view. Mm-hmm. Spies. Again, Aranos, only one who sees the butterflies. You connect with these butterflies. Uh, levels so deep, no one else can fathom their existence. Uh-huh. We don't even see them. That's right. Once another Jesus. character saw butterflies, but that was for a different reason. <laughs> Very different reasons. I suppose that is true. I had forgotten about that moment. Okay. As me meanwhile, Jasmine will just play with me as, mm-hmm. as you're riding yes. along. Yes, I mean, several days uh, do finish. Uh, Mirror, by the way, has been incredibly unsettled during this entire trip, Jasmine. Just so you know. Mm. Mirror feels the emotions, too. And how desolate the landscape is. Mm. It is try, a, to tr- try and keep her calm. Give her an extra treat. It is most certainly difficult to mistake the appearance of how luscious the wild wood appears. As uh, you see the grand tree line in the horizon. Uh, not really a horizon, because it's an entirely different place. Uh, but off uh, the distance. It also seems like a number of refugees have flocked and migrated as best as they could here, because looking at the trees and the leaves, it seems as if this forest is actually fully embracing what spring is. Whatever cold has afflicted the world has not impacted the wild wood here, uh, perhaps due to all of the magic flowing in through this place. Which, Superior Tractors will remind, there's probably several hundred, if not uh, several thousand, of druids now gathered in the wild wood, and more will be coming. If, uh, if you thought Horizon was bad with its magical interference, uh, I think this will be worse. I'd like to see that. Uh, I don't think you're serious. Aranus silently doubts that it'll be worse, because this is a different type of magic. Stuff to say, I guess. Mm. Yes. Uh, passing, like, towards and into the wild wood does take you past refugee camps of people who've, like, huddled, like, away from civilization into nature itself, uh, hoping for shelter, hoping for food, because... There really is a temperature difference. Riding into the wild wood, even with the sun as it is, and uh, even with the temperature as it is, it all changes. And it actually does feel like spring has arrived just for the wild wood. It's a different feeling than uh, spring arriving in Horizon, uh, but perhaps the ultimate effect is the same. Although uh, Taraptus uh, keeps his severe frown. It is about an hour's worth of travel time somewhere south into the wild wood where Terapis finally throws up his hands and says, All right, where the hell is he? Or she? Envoy! He, like, knocks on a tree. Envoy! (sighs) Terapis, or or Superior, with all due respect, I'm sure the druids will show when they feel the need to. He <laughs> lets out an incredibly exasperated sigh. <sighs> I think they at least notice Astrid by now. Have business to do. Conclave, peace, don't even want to be here. And uh, from the trees then, uh, an arrogant, somewhat condescending voice says, Yes, and that's because we know you don't want to be here, old man. Which caused Teraptus to sigh again. Hey, Jax. Always a pleasure to hear your voice. You mind uh, showing yourself so that uh, we get on with this whole lead-me-to-the-conclave business? 
there is a chuckle from the trees uh, as uh, stepping out of the wooded area is the familiar sight of a man draped in leather and hide with a gold medallion and a staff as well strong hand and a severe face though one that does brook some slight amusement that of Ajax he uh, does have an entourage with him as well as noted by the rustling of trees all around as treants and pixies poke their heads out to see what all the fuss is about. Hmm. Arnos will, uh, will give him a smile standing sort of close to Teraptus after having spoken to him. And a, uh, and a bow of uh, respect. Ajax will actually look from Teraptus uh, towards uh, Aronos and says, It is good to see you again, Prince Aronos Veldoff. Welcome to the Wild Wood. Thousand says, I am glad to have returned, and I am glad to have had the opportunity. It seems there is much uh, going on here, which I may stand as a, an observer to. Says, uh, beyond that, I was uh, told to, uh, to perhaps uh, give you this. Say, and he will take out the... Uh, the, um, the little symbol, the, the mm -hmm. small silver amulet, yeah. and uh, he will place it in his own open palm and uh, sort of reach it towards Ajax. Ajax will uh, lift a brow and quickly step uh, towards Aranos, getting close to him and looks down. Uh, a genuine smile then forms in Ajax's face and says, Oh, I have not seen Liliana in some time. How about that? Thank you, Prince. He will uh, take the uh, the amulet. Oh. And us will once again give him a smile and a slight bow as he uh, as he allows so Ajax to take it and he steps back respectfully. Yes. This uh for secrecy's sake and as well as a warning for all of you. The uh, trip to the conclave will be done a bit more abruptly than just walking there. This is in part to ensure that no outsider knows exactly where it is, to which Tarantus rolls his eyes and groans. But it will not be particularly unpleasant. As a matter of fact, if you'll all just follow me, and uh, Ajax uh, turns away and begins walking through the grove of trees. There's rustling through, like, on either side of the forest, as, like, the pixies follow after. As we'll look to his companions and then follow Ajax. Yep, we'll follow, I guess. And Taraptus slowly follows after, mumbling under his breath about druids and bullshit and fucking this is gonna be like a teleportation thing anyway. And he hates this shit. <laughs> oh, now he doesn't like it, huh? Uh, well, that, before it was all Kane, now it's divine. Aaron has imagines that this is much like the court, probably. We will go somewhere, and the thing will find us. That, as a matter of fact, is exactly how it works in this particular case. Uh, Aranos could most assuredly, with his familiarity, feel and describe this orientation, the spinning of the wood, as you are led directly to the destination that's in mind for you. It's actually no further than maybe a kilometer trip. But uh, it is somewhat disorienting, too, uh, as Aranos would feel, because he's also not entirely sure how much of a distance was actually crossed. Mm -hmm. uh, What's the purpose of it? Yes, that is to say exactly where you are now in the wild wood. The answer to that question is... Uh, uh. We are at the Conclave. Yes. <laughs> and, it's going to uh, be anywhere. Yes, with that in mind, there actually is a map for that wonderful place called Wildwood the Conclave. I've already copied your tokens there. Although the Conclave map isn't inherently much to look at, it's more fitting than uh, staring at the Horizon map, because you most definitely are not in Horizon anymore. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Uh, Aranos, 
also uh, can note that uh, the same butterflies are fluttering along too, along with all of the other rustling of the trees as individuals are trailing along, although respectfully some distance away too. Uh, Ajax uh, does not inherently bother to speak, uh, though Taraptus does yell a few things up at him at times, or like, how's the weather? You know, like, a name small talk designed to needle at Ajax. Which Ajax will then respond with needling at Taraptus with answers like, Feels great here. It's spring. How's the weather back home? And Taraptus will be like, It's great! <laughs> it's spring! <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, then, we'll just roll her eyes at this, thinking that... Horizon and this place are pretty much exactly the same. Mm. Except mm. different. Very different. Mm. Or the, like uh, polar opposites. The, uh, it's the, as infuriating for outsiders as it is in Horizon. You should come to the Elden Court. There is that quality of outsider nature, which uh, most of you most assuredly are. Uh, that being said, uh, Ajax will, after this kilometer's trip, which does not take very long to say, we're here. You may uh, set up a tent or whatever it is that you want to do off to the side of, well, looking around. Uh, it is, this particular location, a clearing of sorts. There is a small, fine, silvery mist uh, collecting at the bottom. Uh, looking up at the sky, uh, you can see it through the trees. The sun is beaming down brightly, uh, although much of its light is obscured by the heavy uh, tree cover. Around, you do see a number of humanoids uh, gathered, uh, faces and shapes, uh, too numerous to really identify, but all of the races represented in the Dragon Empire are most certainly here. Uh, Ajax looks over and says, This really isn't the Conclave meeting area itself. This is more of an external area. The, uh... The wood has not prepared to have so many people in it for uh, such a length of time. Uh, many druids are also more comfortable among their own and separating off into separate groups to discuss. The Conclave has yet to officially start. It uh, will be some time, although... The High Druid herself is definitely here, and uh, making waves as she does. With that in mind, he, uh, Ajax looks over to... Uh, and I'll put Ajax here on the map. Here we go. Ajax says, With that in mind, Prince Aranos, I have been sent in part, actually, to collect you in particular. There is someone I am told to lead you to who would enjoy speaking with you. And I will bow his head and say, uh, I'm intrigued. I shall uh, I shall come with you at once. The rest of you, you can, uh... Well, what's the saying? Make yourselves at home. Just, uh... Tr I suppose you can wander a bit. You'll be collected if you get lost. No trouble. Ajax smiles. It has a slight <laughs> tinge of condescend <laughs> condescension to it. Of course. Of course. Taraptus snorts. He begins setting up his tent quietly. <laughs> yeah, I guess we are set up a half circle of tents. Yep, you are certainly more than welcome to. Uh, yours will not be the only tents in the clearing. I we should shall be the by. most ostentatious. <laughs> we should build a palisade. Okay. <laughs> and as such as, sure. as if there is anything that you as a collective group minus Manakai would like to do or discuss with each other, or with Taraptus, or with, you know, NPCs, or there's something you'd like to handle. Uh, you should do that before I uh, handle Manakai being alone. I do imagine Jasmine has made a few um, discon disconcerted side comments. Still her with her absolute composure, but it's difficult for her. She's normally used to tracking, kind of, when she's moving through woods, kind of tracking everything she can, trying to, you know, keep her orientation. I don't think it really works here properly. It really doesn't. Amir is uh, actually noticeably happy here, and hopping around on her shoulder, uh, though she does, uh, Mir does seem to notice and quiet a bit at, uh, at Jasmine's mood. Jasmine, 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 Jasmine actually, as she, as she was 
move of being so happy, kind of exciting, kind of just allows, yeah, yeah Miv, Miv, Miv can just fly around a little bit if, if Miv wants to. Fly I'm around also, the camp, explore. I'm also trying to find Mirv's token. I'm, like, looking around fucking, like, everywhere. <laughs> My map's like, Mirv? I, I have no idea where you last left it. I can put down the token myself, probably. I think I have Mirv. a little bit of it. Grimmer, 30 page. Mirv? <laughs> I got it. There's Mirv. Mirv. Looking for my Mirv. Mirv? Mirv. <laughs> You're Mirv. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think all instances of Mirv may have been deleted over all of the maps I <laughs> Well, Mirv now doesn't exist again. Mirv. All right. I just, I just most certainly set up her tent and, well, for various amenities. This is a interesting environment for her, but she's used to, I mean, she's used to military travel. Mm -hmm. It's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, Gurak is a bit on edge with all the uh, noises from the forest and whatnot. Yes, uh, it this, is. He, he's not really at home in this uh, environment. Yes, this is definitely not the mountains and hills of the Frost Range Companions. No, 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 it's not. It is uh, decidedly warm here, as if spring is actually here, though, so there is that. Well, you know, warmth is overrated. A great deal of greenery and life. Mm -hmm. The air is fresh <laughs> and uh, smells like flowers, but smell like gems to Garak. <laughs> No, they don't smell at all. <laughs> That's right, they don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, horrible place. I smell nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. Oh. Mm. Uh, Tempest, Aurelia, you folks good? Oh, yeah, this is good. Aurelia's not exactly. <laughs> Maybe comfortable either, but certainly more relaxed than she was in Horizon. Does she get some joy in seeing Taraptus's discomfort? Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, this is how it feels like to go into Horizon without connections. Right. Exactly uh, like this. You go in there and you are lost instantly. That's how it works. Because he feels, he, and he looks thoroughly unsettled and... Almost like the old man is pouting. Like, as soon as he gets, like, his tent set up with the help of, like, Astrid, he, like, goes in there. You imagine, like, smoke, his pipe, and sulk. <laughs> uh, Olia also does take, uh, derive some amusement from, uh, Taraptus's displeasure. Probably the first time she's actually smiled since, uh, the teleportation. As for, uh, good old wonderful Aranas, is, uh, led through a winding series of trees. Uh, not too far, though, not the same sense of disorientation that, uh, was received whenever, uh, uh, you were conveyed here near the Conclave, but, uh, you certainly are walking away from the group, far out of sight. Uh, you're actually alone with Ajax right now. This is the middle wood. This is where wood elves live. Yes. This is, uh, it's great. You will notice that uh, all other creatures have, uh, it seems, at least according to Aranaz's perception, have stopped following, including the butterflies. There's no pixies, no, like, treants or whatever. It's just you and Ajax. Right. Well, Ajax is not saying anything. Uh... He, uh, he is not the sort to just volunteer. He, uh, he does not seem to be much of a chatter. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he seemed to be genuinely happy with the token uh, from a mutual friend. And, uh, yeah, for now, Aranos will, will respect that and simply observe the, or, yeah, take it in, so to speak. You know, breathe the air here. F let his senses really explore the, the wood around him. Yes, this area is most assuredly the most reminiscent he's had of home since actually being home. Mm -hmm. uh, after mm -hmm. six or seven minutes of walking, Ajax says, I was actually surprised whenever uh, he wanted to speak with you, but it seems that your name does carry some weight, the Prince Aranos, and... He was highly intrigued by hearing that you would be arriving here in the Wildwood. 
I am still not entirely sure who this would be. However, I am intrigued to meet him. Yes. Well, I am sure you know of him strictly through reputation alone. Is that not right, Aelor? And, uh, waddling around one of the large, like, oaken trees is, well, he's not that much taller than Priestess Olia, a corpulent fellow, a dragonkin, like, waddling a bit, uh, heavily decked in, like, wonderfully ostentatious clothes. And, uh, Aranos can afford rolling uh, both his dice with the three and his dice with the Hydruid here. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Uh, well, from what little you might know, especially since Ajax plugged the name, uh, this corpulent dragonkin fellow is certainly emanating a great deal of power. Uh, this might very well be Aelor, the Draco Druid. Mm-hmm. Though uh, Aranos has not had any personal connections or dealings, can't recall too terribly much about his personality off the top of his head other than what he's heard during campaign. Well, certainly is interesting. And uh, he will uh, he will give the uh, to Dragonkin a, uh, a, a deep, respectful bow. Aelor hmm. a- uh, says, Welcome, uh, Prince Aranus. It is uh, very good to see you here. I am uh, delighted uh, by your appearance and by your acquaintance. I am Aelor. I am, of course, known for many things, uh, most specifically for my time in uh, Dragon Hall. But uh, I am back here now for the Conclave. Aranos nods and says, I have heard of your name, if not exactly of your deeds. It seems that the whispers of the Wildwood have not reached as far into the elven court as I could have hoped. It's a very respectful smile. Yet, I am delighted to meet, to make your acquaintance. And it I is, am indeed happy to be here as well. It is quite all right that you have not heard specifically of everything that I have done. He, uh, shares a look with Ajax. Ajax offers a non-committal shrug at Aelor. <coughs> Aelor looks back to Aranas. That being said, I had hoped to speak with you in part because of your, well, quite frankly, your connections as well as your your perhaps disposition. Uh, tell me, if you don't mind, Prince Aranas, how you feel about a clawed hand gestures around all of this, the the situation, the, the uncommon, unnatural cold blighting the land, the... Uh, the suffering of civilization, as distant from it as you may be, as a warden of the Crystal Lake. Well, that is a very wide question. It, I understand, is, by correspondingly, very wide answer. The current situation of the realms, meaning all of them, is unstable, and it will not last. There is much imbalance to be found. And there are many peoples who have not embraced the unity that they perhaps uh, should in order to create a stable society where all may live to their potential. A wise answer for the very vague question I gave you. I think then you will be of help. Listen, um, He'll actually uh, step closer and actually uh, lower his voice. Your, uh, your aunt, uh, Shana Veldoth, the high druid, she, uh, she uh, doesn't quite see eye to eye on many things. I, uh, she uh, is hoping to retain her position of authority here, and she does not quite recognize that change is coming. Now... Out of respect for you and your connections, I'm hoping that, well, not for you to talk with her, of course, uh, but uh, I'm hoping more for you to understand 
where we as druids are going and how we could help each other in the future of this world. I would be glad to hear what you have to say. Specifically, I have no immediate interest in fighting the Dragon Empire as it stands either. I think civilization has learned that it cannot endure as it has, that uh, its time of prosperity and shackling nature has long gone, and it must concede that what it has done to this land is inherently wrong, that it is not the master of the trees and the earth and the spirits, but at best an ally and should be made to recognize as such. Now, many of my compatriots, he gives a pointed look at Ajax, and then back to Aranos, are willing to fight and die to ensure that the Empire learns of their crimes. I, however, and Ajax to some extent, uh, Aelor gives Ajax a playful smile. Uh, Ajax... (sighs) Pinches his nose. And he says, I understand that there are other more pressing concerns here in the world, uh, particularly this unnatural ice that threatens to blanket it. We druids gathered are strong, yet with the destruction of the Sylvan Grove and other travesties abroad, we have suffered too. And should this blight be allowed to continue to exist, not even we will endure. We are hoping thus to reach some semblance of compromise with the Dragon Empire, but I do not think that is one that can be obtained without me as High Druid, which is my rightful place, and one that has been denied to me until this conclave. This is... Such a position is admirable, and I believe that it is a true one. Or well, Aranas would like here to check if this guy is telling, if he's being completely upright with his intentions. Sure, uh, that is a worthy uh, pursuit to take. How would Aranas attempt to read him? Well, as a warden of the Crystal Lake, something you have to do pretty much every day is read your companions. And really anyone you meet in that sort of area to see if they have been influenced or if they're hiding any sort of ulterior motive. Sure. I suppose that would then be a wisdom. Yes. In my background. Yes. You can make that out in the open. All right. Okay. Uh, Aelor the Draco Druid uh, seems genuine and his immediate desire to uh, not uh, fight the Dragon Empire. He also seems highly convinced that he will be the next High Druid. That position is his. Uh, Aranas would uh, uh, read a considerable pride in his voice at conveying that. And uh, while uh, Aranas doesn't think, uh, has no, like, well, he may certainly suspect, but at least not from what Aelor has said, doesn't think Aelor is lying. There's certainly plenty of things Aelor also hasn't said yet. Mm-hmm. But at least the initial desire to not go to war with the Dragon Empire is there. Mm-hmm. How would a change in Druidic leadership exist? I apologize for not being more informed, but it is not something that has been spread wide, as I understand it. Of course not. Typically, there is a challenge. Uh, sometimes conducted at a conclave such as this. Uh, The High Druid, your aunt and I, Ishana, have not seen eye to eye on many things. She has a more aggressive stance in mind, I think, and she also... She's also willing to take the time to to gather all of the druids across all of the Dragon Empire to try and hear about and discuss this situation and what we should do about it instead of taking action. She's not acting, as evidenced by the fact that so many of our kind have gathered here 
and we're still waiting for others. While the world is getting colder, and the Lord of Dead is furthering his plans. Uh, Aylor offers like a helpless shrug. The druids here do understand that action must be done, and there cannot be that much more time for chatting. Uh, certainly aggressiveness uh, is being conveyed through Aylor's uh, words. Perhaps he's putting his own spin on this, though. Uh, he might just have his own attitudes and perceptions of how the High Druid is. Eranos is, is used to, to to having draconic things trying to influence him. Yes, there is that. <laughs> There's also the fact that he's heard quite a bit of noble bullshit spin, like in noble court. <laughs> politicking. Yes. Which many he, Druids probably don't do a whole like, lot of. Like, effectively, he is politicking right now. That's all I'm not to say, yeah. That sounds uh, uh, like a dangerous position to be in for her. Would such a challenge be a battle or a vote? It could be either. She must be made to accept, and I think she will before the end of this conclave, that her position is simply untenable. She is a... He uh, gets a actually regretful look on his face. Uh, and looks over at Ajax, who nods, and Aylor looks back to Aronos and says, I I disagree with some. Sometimes I am diametrically opposed. The Theral the Everliving, who held the Sylvan Grove in Dragon Hall, was one such example. But I would rather my brothers and sisters, who are druids alongside me, still live, than those who disagree with me be dead. There is much to be done in this world. And all of their assistance is required. It would be for the best if she recognized that she was no longer the High Druid. And uh, he certainly is speaking from him believing that it would be for the best if she just recognized that she was no longer the High Druid. I can see some merit to that from my position here as an outsider. Perhaps it would be possible that I could speak with her as well. Maybe I can change her mind or prepare her somewhat for or explain that change might be necessary. He, uh, he looks quizzically. Perhaps, if she would see you, she has, uh, kept in retreat along with many of the other druids passing to and fro as she considers the numerous questions that we ask ourselves during this conclave. But, as many others would also decree, she is also afraid. Afraid of the position that she will no longer be holding. She is holding on to being a high druid, and is denying us all the opportunity to move forward with decisiveness by continuing to clutch to that title. You know, just, I believe indeed that sort of move center is all simple that this would be a time where the druidic community must stand together in their decision with that in mind um, I do have a suggestion which I do believe would thoroughly force her hand and ensure that I would be able to rise without having to worry about control here as we act with decisiveness towards saving this world from the Lich King. And that would actually involve your mother's help. Raise an eyebrow slightly. Oh. Yes, for <laughs> as mercurial and capricious as the Elven Court is, their, quite frankly, their presence, I think, is needed in order to ensure that civilization goes along with this, and to ensure that the Wizard King does not prevail. They raised the orcs once to help strike down the Wizard King, and I do believe the elves could help again. More specifically, I would hope to even pin down your capricious mother as... Uh, apologies here, as flighty and mercurial as she is, in marriage. 
I wish for her to be my life partner, and I hers. That would provide such a strength that not even the current High Druid and not even the Dragon Empire could violate that. Yonas is slightly taken aback at this suggestion. It is quite outrageous, but on the other hand, the court certainly would love it. You, of course, recognize the difficulty in even trying to make such a compact. You've... He seems like he's trying to be polite, but like, mm -hmm. he, like, he tries to like, explain it, and then the words die down. It says, uh, the court certainly has power beyond, I believe, well, many of the other potential powers of this world as it stands. However, the court is cautious and certainly mercurial in its actions, and will not take a stance before it is absolutely necessary. Should the court be awakened so, much change would come in the world, and it would likely come rather rapidly. It is a... it is a large thing, you ask of me, and I... He, uh, believe that I could have quite a lot of influence on this decision. He, uh, he bobbles his head and says, You, of course, I would not expect you to even try to attempt this without giving you anything in return. He, uh, he, uh, inhales and, like, puffs out a bit and says, I know that as a warden of the Crystal Lake, a position which is not as respected as it used to be, that there are many troubles that you do endure, particularly with... And his eyes look down to the tooth. Aaron his hand sort of re reflectively moves towards the hilt. Slowly wrap around it, you know, just to feel that it's still there, even though yes. the constant barrage on the back of his mind. He can feel the heat emanating from it. It is heated. Mm -hmm. And he uh, looks up to Aranos's eyes and says, But with the assistance of united druids and active elves, particularly after we have handled the Wizard King again, I think that we could resolve the matter of the green for good. It is not safe for something to just be imprisoned. We know that from personal experience now. When the white's bones were retrieved and are being threatened to wheel Raken. We cannot allow future generations to constantly fret over the green rising as the white has to terrorize everyone. Such would as well have dire ramifications for the court and the world, indeed. You're speaking of truly grand things that few would dare even mention. One cannot rise to my position without dreaming big, and it does take quite the large amount of dreams and power to hope to stop the Wizard King from rising again. Whatever you might think or even hear about me, know that I too will not survive in a land of frost and dead. Yeah, no, there's not. That is, that is sort of the baseline here working with. And it says, uh, your proposal is a brazen one, if nothing else. However, I do see an age that is ending, and a new order that must be established. Perhaps the elves would be rewarded in taking a greater stance, or a more active stance, in establishing such a new stability. I think Aelor nods vigorously and says, The Dragon Empire is faltering. Whether they recognize it or not, the Court of Stars most assuredly will take a greater role in shaping this world. You nod know, slightly, sort of his hand moving in you know, a sort of a, again, a motion to, to sort of wrap around the hilt of, of the Tooth of the Green. As he nods slowly, says, <laughs> I shall. Uh, hmm? 
the the tooth, by the way, completely disagrees with like yeah. no, like you can no. you can handle all of these other things Just without this drag guy's me out help. and stab in the heart right now, and you can gain awesome power. Yeah, he's, he's used to having yes. a magic item that always <laughs> disagrees with what is best. So, or tries to manipulate him by disagreeing and then hoping he would agree. Yes, you know, it has its own agenda, and it's much smarter than anyone he knows, which is it's sort of a difficult thought to live with. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> could be I'm just doing exactly what it wants by denying it hmm. maybe I should talk about this with someone no I can't do that no they will think I'm mad and will kill them in their sleep just because it tells me to all the time hmm. <clears throat> well uh, Elo certainly seems to be a uh, decisive option and uh, Aaron S has sort of two things that he's absolutely sure of. One is that the Mercurial Court indeed could do this. Uh, there is quite a lot of power there that has just sort of been brewing for ages, really, where little has happened with the actual elven involvement in anything. Yeah, so they're basically playing with themselves. Yeah, and it's just becoming sort of a more and more concentrated brew of, of power that could be unleashed. However, once that is done, it is done. And, and I mean, the world will have changed. Right now, the court is safe because anyone who would mess with it would basically be the recipient of whatever power they have gathered for all these years. And elves live a long time, and you can learn a lot about wizardry and power in a long time, those who dedicate themselves to it. Of course, there's a lot of artists and music, musicians and such. Beyond that of course, is the fact that he's pretty sure that his mother, uh, the queen, would probably be taken aback by the suggestion of marrying a dragonkin. But on the other hand, she has done stranger things for amusement. She, uh, I mean, <laughs> your, your one unique thing testifies. To yes, like she has done many strange things for amusement and would likely enjoy such a marriage for maybe even the length of this dragonkin's life. 